Are you ready for some dynamite? A dynamite! He changed American TV forever with his catchphrase, Dynamite, and was a symbol of the 70s Black American dream of success. He rose from the ghetto to star in a hit TV series, playing a teenager at 26. But did his co-stars find him difficult to get along with? I don't remember ever speaking a word to Esther the whole time she was there. I think the same basically goes for John. We were never friends. We never spoke to each other only on the set. The Good Times star was a stand-up comedian. He was outstanding, and writers like David Letterman and Jay Leno made him better. I was able to get my staff of guys together. You know, all my writers. I had uh, Leno, who did the show, actually. Jay Leno, and I had David Letterman, who I got some jobs from. Though Jimmy Walker was funny on and off screen, friction between Esther Roll, Jimmy, and John Amos, who was just eight years older than Jimmy Walker, though he was playing the children's father, began to build up. Esther disapproved of J.J.'s character, and the main cast members were not as tight as they looked on screen. There is a rumor that they were never friends. Did dissatisfaction force Esther and Amos to leave good times? Let us start at the beginning. James Carter Walker Jr. was born in Tough South Brooklyn in New York on June 25, 1947. He grew up in the Bronx and gave up school to attempt to work on several jobs. He worked as a vendor in the Yankee Stadium and had a job as a courier in the Grand Union Market, earning $47 a week. Growing up in the projects, he didn't consider performing arts as a career. Jimmy Walker's life as a kid revolved around basketball courts. He was over six feet tall at 15, but his thin frame failed to carry much weight on the path to the NBA. Jimmy started his work as a comedian in 1967 with a group called Last Poets. They wanted an opening act for New Year's Eve, and Jimmy Walker quickly floored the gathered crowd of 350. He stayed with the Last Poets for over a year. Walker started his career on TV with a role in Jack Parr's show in 1972 with the help of some of his old friends. He gave up his day job and started working full-time as a comedian. He was open about his acting. He once said, I'm no actor. I'm a comic who lucked into a good thing. While working a gig, Jimmy Walker caught the casting director's attention for Norman Lear and was invited to join Good Times. So this woman comes up to me and she says, I've been watching you do, you know, whatever. You're very funny. She says, I'm a casting director for Tandem Production. And I went, good for you. And I left. <laughs> And she says, no, no, no. We're doing a show on the West Coast called Good Times. And I said, yeah. She says, He's, she's doing this show and we'd like to have you be on this show. Jimmy initially did not believe what she was saying. People lie so much all the time. If I had half the lies that people tell you, I wouldn't even be sitting here. I'd be too big for you guys. I wouldn't even be sitting here. But the next week, she was back, and that time with Norman Lear, and they gave Jimmy an actual contract, which he didn't know what to do about. Things started moving very fast for Jimmy Walker. The production company sent airline tickets for him to fly out to be in the show, and Jimmy Walker has never looked back since. His catchphrase, Dynamite, in the Good Time show became popular. Soon, a talking doll was on the market, which blurted out the famous phrase. Walker was a household name and a major celebrity. The show Good Times was an instant hit. Even the Time magazine named him Comedian of the Decade. Good Times enjoyed a five-year run, and Jimmy Walker's fame grew. He was the first winner of the NAACP Image Award and also won a Golden Globe nomination for Best Supporting Actor. Jimmy Walker never married or fathered any children, but he appears to have enjoyed his life to the fullest. He was speaking during a 2012 episode of The Wendy Williams Show when Jimmy said that he had numerous girlfriends. However, there were many rumors that Jimmy Walker had been married to Friday the 13th actress Jerry Fields since the 1980s, which was caused by their appearance together in The Tattletales from 1974, but they were never an actual couple. In 2017, rumors started circulating that he was in a long-term relationship with conservative speaker and columnist Ann Hart Coulter, 14 years younger than Jimmy. Still, Coulter denied the rumors by tweeting, Best of friends, love him, no romance. Like Jimmy, Ann Coulter never married, but was involved in several celebrity relationships, including comedian Bill Mayer. But the news of Jimmy dating Coulter came from a source very close to him. Norman Lear, who produced Good Times, dropped an absolute bombshell when he sat down for an interview with Entertainment Weekly with Kenya Barris. 
I love him. He's a wonderful guy, but I tell you something about him that'll astound you. He dates Ed Kohler, he said. So what happened here? Did Coulter break up with Jimmy with a public tweet? While Jimmy Walker's comedic character kept becoming larger, gaining more attention, the role of the rest of the cast were getting smaller. Esther Roll was concerned about its effect on black kids, as Jimmy was cast as an 18-year-old who could not read or write, but seemed to make it by saying, Dino Mike. The TV sitcom Good Times started with a poor black family living amidst financial troubles in the ghetto. With J.J. becoming a larger-than-life character, Esther Roll felt J.J. was a poor role model for the black community, but all Jimmy Walker wanted to be was a good comedian. The audience was happy with J.J. and his humor, but like Roll, John Amos also had reservations about the show's direction. He was finding it difficult to work with J.J. It's very hard to work with a gifted comic, and he's a funny man. It's hard in the sense that you're supposed to be my character being the stoic, you know, hard-nosed dad. It became very difficult at times. Disagreements with the production team forced John Amos to leave the show in the third season. Esther Roll followed after arguing with the producers about overemphasizing J.J.'s character. But Jimmy Walker didn't try to make friends with the two adult characters in the show either. In a YouTube interview, he said, I will honestly say I don't remember ever speaking a word to Esther the whole time she was there. I think the same basically goes for John. We were never friends. We never talked. Jimmy admitted never even having their phone number. Friction between actors was well known outside the show as well. Jimmy recalls that once there was a discussion on getting the whole crew of Good Times together for an event. And Barbara, who was the show's PR girl at the time, said, We never, ever did anything together. Barbara Broglioni was our PR girl. He says, I can't get these people to sit in a room together, let alone in a show together. Jimmy respected John Amos and Esther Roll for their acting talent. He says they were terrific actors and had been doing it for a long time, but they never accepted how the show was progressing for what it was. Jimmy thinks that if they had a little more love or friendship within the cast, the show would have been more successful. Jimmy Walker has been captivating audiences for four decades now. He continued his career as an actor and a comedian, appearing in many hit TV shows like The Tonight Show. Even with his success on TV, his main interest lies in stand-up comedy, and he makes it a point to spend 35 to 45 weeks a year performing live. Jimmy's creative juices are still flowing despite moving away from mainstream television. I'm still creative. I'm writing, I'm working, I'm doing, you know, not big comedy shows, 50 people. That's one of my biggest happinesses in the world. Jimmy Walker published his autobiography, Dynamite, Good Times, Bad Times, Our Times, a memoir in 2012. Jimmy is 76 years old now and his net worth is assessed at $800,000.